Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and today I want to give you a really fun tip. This is a way of so that you do not have to use glass on your watercolors, and not matte or glass. And that's what a lot of the watercolors would like to do, is not spend all that money on glass and matting. And anyways, you can make your paintings more valuable because they don't, they're not behind glass. And so we're going to show you today how to wax, wax your watercolors. And so let me go right to our tabletop and we'll show you how to do this. So I already had waxed this one. I want to show you what happens when you wax your watercolor. So this has been um, watercolor waxed, <laughs> or um, waxed with a, I'll show you these in a second. But look at what you can do. This is, um, this is my dirty watercolor water. I'm just going to take it and drip it all over this. Look at this. It just goes right in there and look at that. Just nothing happens to your watercolor. It just kind of goes right in. This is dirty water. <laughs> it's spilling on here. Let's see what happens when you do it on a real one. <laughs> it soaks into the paper. So let me just put this to the side over here <laughs> and then wipe off my other one here. Because this is the one we're going to be waxing. So that may affect it. <laughs> okay, let me see how <laughs> we do that. All right, so this is um, what happens is this wax is called um, cold wax. And what it does, I've got three different brands, and one of them is for oil paints. And they use it with oil painting, I guess, to make more texture and thicker. And um, they use it with, and this is more of an art product, where this is a furniture product, which is what they use um, Jolie and Annie Sloan paints. They use on uh, furniture um, they're on their paint. So they buy, you buy a paint, it's chalk paint, and then you put it on the thing. And then instead of varnishing it, you use a wax. And the wax makes the painting or the furniture hard, like, like a varnish. The nice thing about this, using it on your watercolor, is you can just rub it right in, and I'll show you again how to do that in a second. Um, and it, it kind of penetrates with the pigment, it goes into the pigment, and then just hardens it. And it makes it almost like you could put a, you could put a cup of, um, you know, cup on it just like you would a, a piece of furniture. And so that's the same type of thing. So it's really neat that how you can take this, and I, like I showed you on that painting here, is that I let it just runs all off, you know, and it's all protected. Now, do remember to sign it before you get um, before you get it done, because afterwards you cannot put anything else on watercolor wise. You could probably put oil painting on top of it, but you know, watercolor it's protected now, and it's almost and some of it is a little bit shiny against. I guess it depends on if you want to buff it. You can buff it like a um, like a car, <laughs> maybe like a car, or just leave it, just leave it and let it get hard. And it cures in about I think in about a month. But it dries like overnight and it's 24 hours and it dries but to cure and get into the pigment and then just make it solid um it takes about i think they were saying something with the furniture was about a month or so to make it cure um, another thing uh, is that's really great about it is that it doesn't yellow so wax doesn't yellow where the varnishes that you spray on that and i was a lot of watercolors are spraying their thing those in time will um yellow and so you don't want to do that. You don't want to have any else. So this is beeswax. Most, uh, all these products have beeswax in it. And so then there's something to make it hard. And I'm not sure what that is. I didn't go that far into it. But um, it's a neat way of then waxing it and making it so that you don't have to put a frame of glass on your frame. And which is um, watercolor is the biggest problem when you go to a gallery. They don't want anything behind a glass. Because it's just less, um, you can't get as much money for it. So they like to um, have things without the glass. So we've got, this is Jolie. It's called Protective Top Coat Clear Wax. You can see it's just a, it's a paste. It's like a waxy paste. Same thing with Dorland's, Dorland's Wax Medium. And this is more of an art, you know, for um, oil painters. I think they use it. They mix it in with their oil paints. And um, so it gets hard. So remember, it's not, you're thinking that you're smearing wax like um, on it's just going to stay tacky. No, it gets hard as a rock. And then the last one I have here is Annie Sloan, which is a chalk paint, and this is called the Wax Clear. And again, this is for furniture, and you can see they're all pretty much close to the same. This one's a little bit lighter, whiter, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't, this one seems a little bit um, softer, which makes me, got me a little bit more scared because if it's liquid, I don't want to have liquid, because um, I think that would pick it up, but it doesn't, actually doesn't pick anything up. So there's three ways I, I say you can pretty much put it on. You can put it on with your fingers with no glove on. I used a glove on this one because I was doing something beforehand. But I can do it with a glove, without a glove, because this is not these are not toxic. Um, they're um, wax, and so you can just do it with your hand. Wash your hands with soap and water, and you're good to go. 
and or you can take a brush, um, a bristle brush I like to see, and then they also have these things for the furniture, they're um, wax brushes, and you dip in there and you just wax it and you put it around. I like to use my fingers, and so I'll just use Danny Sloan here first, and I just like to put it on my fingers, make sure your fingers are clean. I might I had just nothing before, let me just wipe this off here. And I'm working on a, a old towel. I'm just putting it on an old towel. That way, I'm, it doesn't matter which one I'm gonna use here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it like this and just rub it into the painting. It's that simple. And nothing comes up, it doesn't come up on your hand. I tried that with you know, my fingers and seeing if there's some of it would come up. Nothing came up on that other one at all. So, and I don't think it matters which one of these you, products you use. Um, it's all wax that gets hard and gets nice and hard. and. And again, remember to not make sure you sign your name before you before you do this. Like I said, you can also use this. I just don't want to put too much on. You can go like this and just spread it over, you know, over the painting. I know a lot of people will um, say to use first. They want to use a varnish, a spray varnish, over this to protect it so that it doesn't smear. But it doesn't smear, and the wax doesn't yellow. So if you're putting that varnish on there, it's going to yellow. So just remember that it's because it's like a palette is this is more of a wax a clear wax where that is um the varnish it's it gets yellow it's just like all the resins and stuff they get kind of yellow again here i'm just going to go on here and and depending on how thick you make it i just and as long as you cover it a little bit that's good enough I and mean, i don't want it to be really really thick and make it shiny because i don't want it shiny i kind of want to just protect it and it, like i said it takes overnight to dry and just go over there and you can kind of see where you had done I know you probably can't see it here in the, in the film um, but it actually kind of makes it look like it's wet a little bit which is kind of neat but not shiny um, but it's a, and then it dries matte and what happens is that if you want to buff it you can you know that's what they do for the furniture you can buff it but here I'm just going to the rest of this part and then the one only problem that um, you have to and this is not a problem it's just something because we're working on paper, I'm doing it on paper with a watercolor, and um, so if you're going to frame this, you need a backing, or so either do your backing board before you start painting, glue it with a PVA glue, um, uh, um, acid-free glue, and then you put it uh, neutral. I guess it's called um, acid neutral or pH neutral uh, glue that you put it onto a panel, a panel of you know um, gator board, uh, the hard what do you call it? Hardboard, you can put it on there, you get it at Menards. Anything that's solid and surface, you can glue it onto that. So that, because this is a piece of paper, so you don't want somebody to punch through it and stuff. And so just make it hard so that it's just like a regular painting, like an oil painting on a panel. So you gotta put it on some kind of panel. And you can even probably even paste it onto a canvas panel, which would be like, you know, it's too expensive to do that. But you could. You can just glue it onto it and gluing on. And I will be doing a video for that um, in time. Um, when I, after after a few weeks, I'm probably do that too. And I'm going to show you how to put this onto a, um, to a panel. I usually like to do it before you paint it. You know, because when you're out there, it's nice to just get it done. And when you're at a plain air fest, you can just right away put it into a, a plain air frame instead of with a watercolor. So you always have to put it into a you know a glass and then cut the mat to the size and stuff and. So this will make you do more um, work that's also standard size. So it'll help you in buying cheaper frames, not cheaper frames, but um, less money frames that are um, nice and they'll look more like an oil painting, and even though they're watercolor. And like I said, so I pretty much got this whole thing done. See so yeah, how you just put it down and you just leave it dry, nothing to it, right? And you just kind of smear it down. I guess, like I said, you can also do this way. Um, a lot of people like to go like this and then just rub it in with a brush like this. Um, you don't have to do that. Just basically rub your fingers over and get done, and you're done. That's it. And so again, these three products I, I used, one of them is called Jolie. It's a um, chalk paint. Um, those paints they use, a furniture paint that uh, is like uh, more of a chalk paint. And then the Dorland's wax medium. And I'll put this, all these images, or these images, not the images, but the names, into the um, comments section of the and in the comment section of the video and so you can get them there and i think you can get these all on amazon or um, at any sloan i think there's any sloan stores around uh the uh, any sloan they're all kind of um they're their own store they don't carry like any sloan at like a ha hardware store but um the dorland wax you can get online you know at an art store again i will put links in into the comment section of the video 
All right, and so wait for the next um, uh, video on how to then take this and mount this before you actually do the painting. Or while you do the painting, you can do that too. And you just have to protect it and make sure. And also, you got to make sure it's the right size and stuff. And like, all right, and so until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.